Welcome to Global Hub Updates. Please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon for more updates. Manila, Philippines. The Philippine Air Force is on the verge of a major leap forward. South Korea's KF-21 Boramai, a cutting-edge 4.5-generation fighter, could be in Philippine service as early as 2028, years ahead of schedule. This early arrival marks a dramatic shift in the region's defense landscape. The KF-21, or Young Hawk, is more than just a new jet. It's a symbol of South Korea's rise as a global defense exporter. The Block II variant, with advanced air-to-air -air and air-to-ground capabilities, offers the Philippines a versatile, future-proof platform. For a nation facing complex maritime threats, this dual-role capability is a game-changer. What's most surprising is the timeline export versions were expected in the 2030s, but South Korea's new production strategy has fast-tracked delivery. By integrating export orders into its domestic production, Korea Aerospace Industries can deliver these jets much faster than traditional suppliers. This gives the Philippines a rare chance to field a near fifth-generation fighter on a timeline that rivals older models from the US or Europe. The KF-21's early availability challenges the dominance of Western suppliers and forces Manila to consider not just technology, but strategic alignment. Choosing the Boramai would deepen defense ties with Seoul and signal the Philippines' commitment to a modern deterrent. The world is watching as the Young Hawk prepares to take flight in Southeast Asia. The decision ahead could define Philippine air power for decades. The Philippine Air Force's multi-role fighter program has drawn top contenders from around the world. The American F-16 Viper, a proven and reliable platform, offers deep interoperability with U.S. forces and robust support. Sweden's Saab JAS-39 Gripen is praised for its cost-effectiveness, low operational requirements, and ability to operate from dispersed runways, ideal for the Philippines' archipelagic geography. The Eurofighter Typhoon, while powerful and agile, is often seen as too expensive and complex for the Philippines' needs. Enter the KF-21 Boramai Block II, a disruptive 4.5-generation jet with stealth-influenced design, advanced radar, and internal sensors. Unlike its rivals, the KF-21 offers a technological leap and early delivery, changing the entire equation. The Philippines is no longer limited to established fourth-generation fighters. Now, it can consider a more advanced, future-proof aircraft on a similar timeline. This makes the decision more complex and more consequential than ever before. The choice will shape the nation's air defense for a generation. The stakes have never been higher. South Korea's early offer of the KF-21 is no accident. It's the result of a bold manufacturing strategy called serial integration. Traditionally, countries filled domestic orders before exporting new jets, causing years of delay. Korea Aerospace Industries is breaking the mold by building export jets alongside those for its own air force. This parallel production slashes delivery times, letting partners like the Philippines receive state-of-the-art fighters almost as quickly as South Korea itself. The benefits go beyond speed. Larger production runs lower costs for everyone, making the KF-21 surprisingly affordable. The Philippines would get the same advanced Block II configuration as South Korea, no downgraded export model. This ensures full interoperability and a high level of capability. Serial integration is South Korea's secret weapon, turning the KF-21's newness into a major advantage. While rivals offer older designs, South Korea delivers cutting-edge tech at record speed. For the Philippines, this means a modern air force could be reality much sooner than expected. It's a game-changing approach in the global fighter market. The Philippine Air Force faces a pivotal moment. After retiring its F-5 Tigers in 2005, the nation's skies were left vulnerable for a decade. The arrival of 12 F-A-50 light combat jets from South Korea in 2015 restored supersonic capability, but these are not true multi-role fighters. The F-A-50's limited range, payload and sensors can't match the advanced jets fielded by regional powers. As an archipelago with vast maritime territory, the Philippines needs a powerful modern fighter to patrol its EEZ and deter intrusions. The multi-role fighter program was born from this urgent need. Tensions in the West Philippine Sea make a credible air deterrent essential. Modern fighters would allow the Air Force to intercept threats, protect naval assets, and enforce sovereignty. This isn't just about hardware, it's about securing the nation's future. The choice of fighter will shape defense for the next 30 to 40 years. Every delay leaves the country exposed. The KF-21's accelerated timeline offers a solution, a credible deterrent, delivered fast. 
the stakes couldn't be higher for Philippine security. The Philippines and South Korea share a deep defense partnership rooted in history. Filipino troops fought alongside South Koreans in the Korean War, forging a lasting bond. In recent years, this relationship has grown into a robust strategic alliance. South Korea is now a key supplier of military hardware, from F-A-50 jets to modern warships. The success of these programs has built trust and interoperability between the two nations. The Philippine Navy's most capable ships are Korean-built, and new contracts for corvettes and patrol vessels further cement this partnership. Choosing the KF-21 would be a natural evolution, elevating the relationship to true strategic allies operating a common, high-end platform. Philippine crews are already familiar with Korean systems, making the transition smoother and faster. This shared foundation would make adopting the KF-21 more efficient than starting fresh with a new supplier. The manila Seoul bond is poised to reach new heights. The KF-21 Baramai's appeal for the Philippines comes down to cost, capability, and collaboration. Its price is expected to be highly competitive, cheaper than American 5th-gen jets and on par with advanced 4th-gen rivals. Serial integration keeps costs down, making a near 5th-gen platform accessible. Operational costs are managed through shared logistics with South Korea, ensuring long-term sustainability. Technologically, the KF-21 offers stealth shaping, advanced radar, and a wide range of munitions, including long-range strike options the Philippines currently lacks. This leap in capability puts it ahead of the competition. Collaboration is another edge. South Korea often includes technology transfer and local industry participation in its deals. This could mean local assembly or maintenance facilities, building the Philippines' aerospace sector. The Boramai isn't just a fighter, it's a catalyst for national development. It's a package that goes beyond the aircraft itself. The KF-21's path to the Philippines isn't without obstacles. The jet relies on foreign-made components like U.S. engines and European missiles, which require export approvals. U.S. third-party transfer rules mean Washington must sign off, and approval isn't guaranteed. Delays or denials could derail the deal or force a less capable version. The KF-21 is also a new platform. Early adopters may face technical teething issues. The Philippine Air Force would need strong support from KAI to resolve any problems quickly. Finally, the financial commitment is significant. Funding a full package of jets, training and support will be a major challenge. The deal's viability depends on both technical and financial assurances. Navigating these hurdles is as crucial as the jet's performance. Choosing the KF-21 would send shockwaves through the Indo-Pacific. It would signal the Philippines' intent to diversify defense partnerships and seek greater strategic autonomy. The move would deepen ties with South Korea, creating a new middle power coalition in Asia. Operating a common high-end fighter would boost military interoperability and joint training. For China, a Philippine fleet of KF-21s would raise the cost of aggression in the West Philippine Sea. The acquisition would also position the Philippines as a regional leader in modernization, spurring other ASEAN nations to upgrade. The introduction of a 4.5-generation fighter would raise the technological bar across Southeast Asia. The Philippines' choice will reshape the region's security landscape. The ripple effects will be felt for years to come. The Philippine Air Force stands at a crossroads. The choice of its next multi-role fighter will define its security and strategic direction for decades. The F-16 and Gripen offer proven reliability, but the KF-21 presents a bold, future-focused alternative. The decision is about balancing risk and opportunity-established platforms versus a leap in technology and early delivery. The KF-21's accelerated timeline could be decisive, letting the Philippines field a modern deterrent by 2012. 28. Procrastination is not an option. The security environment demands action now. The MRF choice will be a testament to national ambition. Will the Philippines settle for incremental improvement or seize the chance to build a truly modern air force? The moment of decision is here. The path chosen will echo across the Indo-Pacific for a generation.